I'm John Giever from MidPage Today. Hypereosinophilic syndrome is a rare condition, but nevertheless, it is attracting considerable attention at this year's Quad AI meeting. One of the highest profile presentations was by Dr. Mark Rothenberg of Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. He presented findings from a phase three study of mepolizumab, an IL-5 inhibitor, showing strong efficacy and good safety. The findings are also reported this week in the New England Journal of Medicine, which released the paper early to coincide with Dr. Rothenberg's presentation. We just completed the first um, double-blind placebo-controlled trial with the largest group of patients ever reported for studying uh, drug intervention for hyperacinolic syndromes. In this study, we examined a drug called mepolizumab, which is a humanized biological therapy against, anti against IL-5, the acinolytic growth factor. This study was designed uh, to test the effect of this drug compared to placebo in lowering the dose of prednisone, which is uh, the main form of therapy to maintain this pa these patients' health. This hyperacinolytic syndrome is a life-threatening problem associated with a uh, large increase of eosinophils, type of allergy blood cell, in the blood but also in the tissues. These patients received the study drug for 32 weeks or the placebo and the investigators as well as the patients did not know what the drug was that they received or whether or not they received the placebo. Subsequent to finishing the trial it was revealed that the drug was very potent at m allowing the patients to reduce their prednisone. In fact, a majority of the patients were off prednisone at some point during the study when they took the drug and much less of them were off the prednisone when they took the placebo. And uh, the study also revealed that the drug uh, was able to lower eosinophil levels and improve their overall clinical status despite the lowering of the prednisone dose. The study uh, was um, conducted in eight countries and four different continents and involved a strong collaborative group of, pay of, of uh, physicians and healthcare providers interested in, in treating the patients that suffer from this rare but debilitating disease. Working with this, with this product and real world patients, is it, is it something that you as a clinician would, would feel comfortable in, in using in a clinical setting? Yes, it's uh, certainly a very effective medication. It appears to be very safe and it's something that one would definitely want to use if they had this disease. Um, and uh, is, was it a fair comparison, I guess, for uh, a drug uh, to be used in, in a clinical setting when uh, in that, uh, the placebo patients here we're also attempting to wean them off of, of steroids as well, whereas, you know, in, in the normal clinical setting, you know, patients are, are taking the regular steroid dose. So, right. you know, would it, would it be an appropriate comparison for, for another study to uh, compare uh, mebolizumab plus uh, steroids with uh, just steroids without, you know, without mm -hmm. the placebo component? But yeah. I think it's a very fair study. It's a very uh, practical study design because in fact the majority of these patients are, you know, are maintained on steroids, of usually uh, high doses of steroids, and um, we wanted to prove that we can actually have a clinical and, and, um, and benefit to these patients, so we designed the study particularly testing its ability to lower the steroid dose. So uh, uh, what happens next with, uh, in, in, in your lab and uh, in, in general with this product? My next step is to further understand how the drug works, as well as the actual practical usage, as you mentioned, how it's going to be the best ways to use the medication to make sure that the patients are being maintained at the safest uh, level of the, dr of the drug and have the greatest clinical benefit, and certainly working together with the drug manufacturer and the, um, to meet the requirements of the FDA to get it up. And uh, what's the unanswered question about its mechanism? The unanswered question is to understand um, how the drug actually works and why some patients are responsive to it, other patients are unresponsive, and also the optimal dosing frequency and the long-term consequences of being on the drug in terms of both treating the disease but also other side effects that could possibly develop. Um, yeah, I noticed in the, uh, in the New England Journal, journal article um, that uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, patients going into the study had very low IL-5 levels. Right. Um, there, is there uh, research from, uh, from other studies on uh, what IL-5 levels are, are like in uh, either uncontrolled patients or newly diagnosed patients? Or yes, IL-5 levels were associated with this disease. It dates back 20 years ago, actually. It was a one of the, I was the first person to report elevated levels of IL-5 in human disease, particularly in this disease back in 19, uh, 
88 when we reported that this disease was associated with increased levels in the plasma. Those were generally patients that were kind of naive patients, patients that weren't on steroids at the time. These patients are on steroids and steroids are known to suppress the level of IL-5. So we do have some patients we've treated with elevated IL-5 and in the plasma, and those patients still respond to the drug. So we think the drug in this particular set of diseases, eosinophilic syndromes, is very effective at lowering eosinophils regardless of the IL-5 level in the plasma. And what this tells us from a basic science point of view is that IL-5 is the endogenous mediator for the peripheral blood, regulating the peripheral blood level of this allergic cell, the eosinophil. And how common is hyperuricemia in It's a rare disease. There's probably a couple of thousand syndromes with a uh, couple of thousand people in the U.S. with the classic form of the disease. Certainly more diverse types, as Dr. Cleon talked about today in her presentation, of uh, a lot of other diseases where eosinophils are involved, particularly the overlap syndromes like the eosinophil-associated GI disorders. I'm John Giever from MedPage Today.